Euphoria. Euphoria. The most contradictory series to its title <laughs> in the history of all series. What's good, y'all? It's your good sis Erica Bain coming to you with a Euphoria breakdown. Season two premiered on Sunday night. We are back after a long, long break. Thank you, Panini. You're doing a number, girl. But we are back for the highly acclaimed series starring Zendaya. And y'all, the episode did not disappoint. I ain't even gonna hold you. I had to go back and rewatch it. I'm going to go back and rewatch again after I go and rewatch season one because so much happens that you also need to refresh yourself of what actually is going on in this world I'll tell you one thing I am praying for every teenager at high school this is not what my high school experience was like and by golly miss Molly I don't know how they're gonna make it out honestly truly <laughs> Like, this is insane. And another thing to note is that the series is cinematically stunning, okay? So even if you're confused at some point so you don't actually know what's going on and you might have lost the plot because there's a lot of characters to keep up with. There's so many complex, nuanced stories being told within this one series. It's always gonna look good. Every ounce of this looks amazing. It looks strategic, it looks intentional, and it is creative AF. So Sam Levinson, I'm gonna give you that. So the episode starts off with a deep dive into the story of Fresco. We get to see where he actually, I guess, not where he initiated, because we don't get to see where he's born, but we get to see when he came into custody of his grandmother and how he actually got set on the path of being the drug dealer that we saw in present day his grandmother is a g i ain't even gonna hold you she doing all types of things that could get the child taken away by cps but she love him and she a g she gonna hold it down so i ain't even mad <laughs> I really am not. She doesn't take no, sh the opening sequence is one, honestly, it's one of the, well, actually, I can't even say it's the best looking thing because everything looks so great in the series. She gets out the car, she's rocking this suit with this blazer that says God's word, God's will, and she's walking in, got the gun in her left hand, she's strutting. Everybody already knows what it is. They know what's about to be some mess. You know, the bartender tries to warn the owner who's back there getting his, you know what, topped off. Sorry, you should have head on a swivel head on the swivel bro bro especially if you're gonna be out here putting your hands on fresco and acting a monkey fool you know who his grandmother is let's not act like you don't okay you knew who her daughter was grandma goes on to explain to fresco what his mom is like his mom is no longer in the picture but that his mom was so sweet and taken advantage of because there's like a shortage of kind people in the world so clearly the father knew that and he put his hands on fresco so now he got two shots in the knees for it and you know what i don't feel bad for you sir i really don't mama walked in like a boss popped them two shots off said fresco's coming with me and that's it that's all y'all she goes back to the car and tells fresco yeah i talked to your dad you're gonna come live with me now real simple and that life living with her looks like her ultimately shaping him to be her partner he learns how to cook crack he learns how to cut crack he learns how to count the money that comes in from the crack and honestly it's a lot of life skills in here i still you know don't necessarily feel bad he is in a loving home we can see that fresco is really great at math he can calculate things in his head really quickly because of the business that they in and then we also seven minutes into the episode get to see where ashtray came from because somebody owed grandma money and they put the baby up for collateral and never came back for it and now they got their whole little family popping off she took him in the same way that she took fresco in and that's now his little brother he rides for him it was rough at the beginning but they figured it out and ashtray gets his name this part was so cute y'all and i know it sounds weird i don't know me talking about the series is gonna sound weird all the time so go ahead and just say what you're gonna say in the comment section but you know babies put everything in their dang on mouth so ashtray got his name because he puts a cigarette from the ashtray in his mouth while he's in the bath while mama's cooking up crack and fresco is sitting there on the counter watching like if this ain't giving family matters i don't know what is now we do get to see a couple pivotal moments that aren't so great one being mama you know grandma rolls up on somebody that owes her money she gets a call to somebody at the family donuts and she gotta go over there and whiz behind and fresco gets out the car to try to stop her from killing him because she got this crowbar and she's going to work and she accidentally pulls the back and knocks fresco out he actually doesn't remember quite a bit from what happened then and then from there, their lives really kind of take a turn because the grandma's health starts to deteriorate. She's rushed to the hospital. Fresco actually rushes her to the hospital, which he should have called a, a 911. But if he would have called a 911, it would have came in and saw that they was drug dealers and they got arrested. So, hey, he made the best decision that he could, which meant that he drove her to the hospital, which was a little bit too late. And now that is how she ended up in the vegetative state that we see her in the present day. And we go on to see Fresco and Ashtray and how 
their relationship has developed how their business continue to grow and what actually happened there's a scene where ashtray is not playing no games he feels like fresco is in danger so he grabs his hammer and he goes all types of bruce lee jackie chan mixed with a little bit of karate crazy killing one of the drug dealers and then injuring the other and it's like he gonna ride he gonna ride for his brother this is his family and then from there we get the opening title screen and then we're back into present day so we get 15 minutes of this backstory for fresco honestly it's the most endearing thing ever i like fresco before but now i love him protect fresco at all costs no fresco slander ever here i mean you can jump down in the comment section if you want to but you know do it at your own risk with that fresco slander he is definitely a real one who comes from real raw beginners and his is doing the best that he can and you love to see it honestly you really do now when we pick up a present day y'all we got a high ass jewel in the back seat of fresco's car they ride into what looks like another drug deal and the dude that you know ashtray rocks his whole face and messed up his nose is dead with some little random heroin addict that decides to shoot up in the car and this thing goes goes left i believe that they're trying to facilitate him getting a new connect because ashtray did just kill the last one listen he thought that fresco was in trouble so he had to do something they leave rue in the car with the little heroin addict girl and something ain't right about sis i don't trust her but we get to see you know how the whole deal goes wrong because they all get snatched up and basically stripped down to make sure that they're not cops as they meet this new connect which ultimately turns out to be a good business deal but y'all it's literally 10 minutes of intimidation 10 minutes of i don't know what is going to happen rude does not want to get naked she's like i'm in high school so he puts her in the shower i'm like please do not sexually assault this girl please do not sexually assault this girl but no he's just going to douse it down and make her do a little quick check to make sure there's no recording devices or anything on her so that's it honestly y'all none of this is funny but as you're watching it's so crazy that you just kind of need to laugh but then you're also still worried about the character so it's not until they actually make it out of it safely that you can actually breathe and then chuckle a little bit now from there they decide to go to the east highland house party that is to bring in the new year and child <laughs> I have no idea where we're going with Rue this season, but sis needs help. And I don't even know where the help is going to come from. This is also where we get to see other characters and what everybody else has going on. So we get to see that Jules is at this party. Nate ends up at this party. Chris is at the party. Cassie's at the party. Maddie's at the party. Everybody's at the daggone party. And we catch up to where everybody is kind of like in life. Like they give us a little, a little tidbit of where they at. Now Maddie's at the party looking at the baddies that she is cassie has a whole other little spinoff story that's happening in the meantime because lexi is looking for her come to find out there was a little dust up between the friends cassie gets out and goes to some like little 7-eleven looking joint and nate picks her up from there <sighs> She gets in this car with Nate, y'all. And it is the most disgusting thing. I don't even know. I, you know what? I just think that Nate is disgusting. So anytime he's on screen, I am disgusted. But they have some kind of little connection as she's terrified because he's speeding like a bat out of hell. He's also drinking and driving. It definitely is giving for the most part that they are going to crash and kill. Like he's going to kill all of them in this dang on car. But that doesn't happen. Then all of a sudden, Cassie goes from being afraid to being aroused. And the next thing you know, they at the party and they fucking in the bathroom. It's just like, what? Maddie is your best friend friend Cassie what are you doing and you still want Chris like what is actually happening here I don't know y'all this might be it for me and Cassie because I was feeling sorry for her I, I felt empathy for her but also I can't with her self-destructive nature like she consistently makes things worse for herself like consistently and let's just go ahead and finish talking about Cassie because she goes from being aroused and now she's smashing Nate in his bathroom. And who's at the outside the door trying to go in to go to the bathroom because she doesn't even know that this is actually happening? Oh, hmm, Maddie. So now they have to figure out how they're going to get out of this circumstance without her actually figuring it out because guess what? Nate actually does want to go back to Maddie and you actually want to be her best friend. So sis, why did you open your legs for this man? Why'd you do it? We want to know. Anytime. Go ahead and tell us. Anyway, she winds up having to duck down in the, in the bathroom, in the tub and hide afraid for her life as maddie uses the bathroom as little meech's character travis hey little meech with the cameo up in this joint this season as he comes in he putting his game down trying to bag maddie and they talking and they smoking weed in the bathroom and then they decide to go out and dance with each other and 
Cassie is still in this daggone bathroom. Almost got caught at one point because her phone starts vibrating because Lexi is still calling her, trying to figure out if she's okay, where she's at, if she's coming to the party, what's going on. She made it out of that whole situation by the skin of her chinny chin chin. And when this comes out, y'all, because it's going to come out, it's going to be a problem. Now, again, I'm going to talk about Cassie before I move on from her. Chris actually pulls her up in this episode when he gets to the party and tries to talk to her and she is so distraught feeling guilty and emotional and she tells him ultimately that she's not a good person which is the thing I guess that gives him the okay to like walk away and I was kind of like bro you don't know what she's actually talking about uh this is a little bit endearing to how she's saying it but I also can get it like well actually he got a lot with him too again we gotta I'm gonna I'm gonna be breaking down episode one episode by episode because all of these people got with stuff with them like I am on Chris's side and I I think Cassie is raggedy but also Chris was doing a lot in season one and he was just moving so insecure and so just icky I don't even I don't even have the words for it It was just icky how he was moving in season one so I can't even jump 100% to his side from this scene but also I know because we've been watching what she's been doing in the meantime and she's completely making it worse and it's so crazy because ultimately he's who she want to be with and it's like girl why do you keep doing all these things that are stopping you from doing the one thing that you actually want to do now I definitely think that the scene with Chris and Nate is foreshadowing for some bigger problem that's going to come I hope that Chris is going to rock Nate's coming down the line it has to happen because this whole little sequence where Nate's all up in his face like oh you slept with Cassie you was in the in that bedroom just talking all oh, y'all was being yeah y'all was being like did you use a con and he got real creepy real cringy real weird it's like sir this is my girlfriend well ex-girlfriend why are you asking me so much questions why are you in my damn face if you don't back your ass up <sighs> the stress of it all but you know what Chris didn't even need to handle Nate in this episode because Fresco had something for him but before we get there Fresco and Lexi oh my god at this party with their little coy banter and they flirting and they talking I'm totally here for this couple I think this might be the healthiest couple on the whole damn show and I'm totally here for it they definitely deserve each other both of them are really good people go ahead and make it happen now I'm interested to see how Lexi's going to respond because when she's watching Fresco zero in on Nate when he decides that he's ready to go and he's about to do what he came here to or maybe what he came here to do or maybe not when he decides to beat Nate's ass she's just staring in complete and utter awe and when I tell you you, they it took everybody to get fresco up off of him and they honestly deserved it what you say when you saw fresco the first time at the party what you say didn't you say you was gonna kill me the last time you saw me yeah he said it he got his drink and went on talked to his future bae and then enjoyed the party until he was ready to leave and he saved your ass whooping for the end a saved ass whooping is always the worst y'all you'll never want that don't make nobody save an ass whooping for you i'm just saying i have no sympathy for nate i honestly hope that this takes nate up out of here but i doubt that he's actually dead because people like him don't die that easily and that's how the episode kind of closes but we got to talk about a couple of things that happened <laughs> before that happens so rue and jules reunite here and they have their little moment so i guess their relationship is going to be back on and pop it i am honestly not here for it because i think that jules became a trigger for rue like yes rue's sobriety was already very fragile anyway right like it was already something that was hanging by the thinnest of threads but the way that rue loves jules is unhealthy and it's 100% unhealthy for her to be so new within her sobriety journey and now that she's completely off the wagon it's going to be something that helps her to continue to cycle the drain. Rue almost has a heart attack in this episode because she continues to do drugs at this party with some little rando and he has to give her Adderall or something to be able to speed her heart back up or something have I, I'm watching like I don't even know what the hell is going on this girl is dying and instructing him on what he needs to do to be able to save her and then he she comes back like oh I almost died I thought I almost died there you did Rue you did and even going back to like the Christmas specials y'all Rue like we thought that she has hit rock bottom she could not have she could not have possibly hit rock bottom even tonight or this episode and what we saw even that wasn't rock bottom and I'm just like so terrified for what rock bottom actually looks like with her the one person who we didn't get a ton of in this episode was Kat and honestly it's probably because she's in the most healthy place out of everybody she's still rocking strong with her little boo well Lexi's probably the most healthy but Kat is rocking strong with her little boo I'm looking forward to seeing more from her honestly they really couldn't fit any other story into this episode because it was already packed with so much from everybody else and it's very clear everything that we saw in season one is going to be taken up a notch in season two that was just the beginning y'all we are headed up 
on this roller coaster and it's going to make for a very very steep fall be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my euphoria videos i am going back and i'm going to be re-watching euphoria season one because i want to make sure that i catch everything that i need to catch these episodes are so nuanced so layered and so incredible that i don't want to miss anything and i will be coming with more content for y'all about the series so hit the subscribe button turn on your bell notifications and i will see you in the next one bye